In this video, we're going to discuss a very special engine from Nissan, the VQ35DE. So this engine was fitted in a wide range of cars, even from other car manufacturers. It was such a highly regarded engine. It appeared on Ward's Best Engines from 2002 to 2007 and again in 2016. So we're dealing with a very special engine here. So we're going to look at the best mods and upgrades that you can do to your VQ35DE. And we're going to discuss some of those mods that don't make that much of a difference, but everyone seems to be doing. So hopefully you'll save your money or you'll understand how those mods can be made to be more effective by doing other mods to your VQ35DE. <laughs> So the VQ35DE appeared in sporty cars like the Nissan 350Z and also in family cars like the Renault Espace, effectively a people carrier that was available in some regions. It was a V6 engine, power typically ranged from 200 horsepower to 300 horsepower. The Dallara T8 and T11 both used the VQ35DE engine and they managed to get a reliable race tuned power output of between 419 and 490 horsepower. So the engine has undergone a series of revisions over the years and a lot of people will slate the pre-2007 engines because the intake plenum, the chamber where the air goes into the engine, is not very well designed so it becomes a bit of a restriction even with modest tuning upgrade. In 2005 a track edition of the 350Z came out with the rev up feature where when you change down a gear the engine automatically revs up to match the gear. Performance between the rev up versions and the non-rev up versions was similar but the rev up version typically had about 300 horsepower against the 276 which dropped the 0 to 60 time from 5.9 seconds down to 5.1 seconds so it was quite formidable so let's see what mods we can actually do to the vq35 de to make a significant difference and there's two different routes you can go the supercharged or turbocharged route or stick with the naturally aspirated v6 engine and the array of mods available is quite extensive for this engine because it's been quite popular with tuners so let's have a look at some of the the best mods and upgrades that you can do to yours to get the most power from it and the most enjoyment from your car. So the 3.5 litres actually have a very highly regarded stock crank which can handle reportedly about 1000 horsepower. I'd love to hear your experiences of these engines and just how much power you've managed to get on the stock components. So camshaft upgrades are making a significant change to the way the valves open and close on both the intake and the exhaust road. So the aim really with the camshaft is to enhance the lift to increase the curtain area around the valve to allow more air to flow in as well as adjusting the durations but with variable valve timing the engine is doing a lot to extend the timing of the valves to optimize it for whatever load the engine is under and whatever rpm it's at so we often talk about mapping changing the parameters inside the ecu of the engine just to increase the power output and with a lot of mods it becomes essential that you get some sort of upgrade done to the map that the ecu uses so with the nissan vq35 de a lot of people go with an aftermarket ECU which just allows much more control over the different parameters that the ECU is controlling. So Cyvex, the Link G4X Mega Squirt has also been used a lot on VQ35DE project and we have to mention as well the excellent Haltech, the Elite 1500 and 1000 are very good setups used on the VQ35DE giving you a lot more control over the parameters inside the engine. Now they're quite expensive upgrade but really if you want to release all of the power from your mod you do need to make some sort of adjustment inside the ECU and the aftermarket ECUs are by far and away the best option to achieve that. Please let me know in the comments what your experience has been with getting revisions done to the map that the VQ35DE uses and if you've used an aftermarket ECU that I've not mentioned here please drop it in the comments. If you've got experience with any that I've mentioned again please drop that in the comments and share your tips with our other viewers. So intake mod the aim of any car tuning project is burning more air and more fuel and it's no different on the VQ35DE. If you've got a turbocharger it's pulling a lot of air into the engine and you really want to make sure there is no restriction in the intake. So typical areas of restriction are the plenum on the pre-2007 model and also the air filter itself can add a bit of a restriction. Now just changing the air filter for a full induction kit on most basic engines that have had no other mods done will not yield a massive power gain. So on the dyno you might see about five to seven percent more power um, but I would challenge you in the 
real world to actually notice that difference in everyday driving. That's often the difference you get between driving the car on a cold morning and on a warm evening. So it's not much of a power difference, although that is probably one of the most common mods that people do to their VQ35 DE. So save your money, but that does come into its own if you've done other mods, if the engine is desiring a lot more air and there's become a restriction in the intake. But a little word of warning, don't suck warm air from the engine bay area into the engine because warm air carries less oxygen. So you really do need to ensure that that air box, the air filter, the induction kit, whatever you go for, is sighted and chambered away from those warm underbonnet engine temperatures. And you've got some sort of cold air feed. And you've also got to make sure that it's not going to be sucking in water, which is often the case with some really badly sighted and badly designed cold air feed. So it's interesting looking at the revisions that Nismo made to the 350Z engine engine, the VQ35DE, because they were able to extract more power from it. And just getting a clue as to what areas they focused on can give you an idea on where to go in your project if you've not got one of those Nismo engines. So some of the changes that Nismo made to the VQ35DE, they increased the displacement from 3.5 litres to 3.8 litres. So straight away, they had extra cubic capacity to work with. They focused on the intake and the exhaust and set up a much higher flowing exhaust and intake system. They also revised the camshaft profile with a more aggressive camshaft that allowed a different timing on the intake and the exhaust valve, further optimized to the other mods that they'd done just to allow them to extract that little bit more power from the VQ35DE. They didn't use the stock Nissan engine management system either. They created another ECU setup to handle the mods that they'd made to this engine to further extract more power from it. They'd also strengthened internal components in the engine, focusing on the pistons, the crankshaft and the conrod, just to make sure that although this engine was putting out more power, it was still just as reliable as the Nissan variant it was based on. We can learn a lot from Nismo's approach to tuning the VQ35DE. 2007 was an important year for the VQ35DE because Nissan introduced quite a few significant revisions to the engine that improved both economy and power delivery. For example, the e ECU was revised, the internal components of the engine were also revised and amended, and they later revised it and created the VQ35HR block, which we're going to discuss in another video. So the CVV TCS system, it keeps the valve duration much shorter at low engine speed, and it altered lift and duration, so that pretty much negates the need for going out and dropping in a sporty cab. There was a GTS version of this engine released with the supercharger as well, which added about another 100 horsepower to the engine. So the standard intake on the VQ35DE typically flows quite well to about 350 horsepower. So that's the benchmark where you start needing to do upgrades to that system. But altering the exhaust and the intake flow, the cam timing, and just focusing on that area of the engine can actually yield about 30% more power in some cases. So let me know what your experience has been with these engines, whether you've been able to achieve this much rumored 30% power height. I'm a little skeptical that you can get that much more power from this nicely tuned engine just by doing mods to the intake, the exhaust and the valve duration. So how strong are these engines? Well, stock internals are typically good for about 400 horsepower. So I know some people have pushed it harder than that, but often they reduce the life expectancy of their engine. So they may be able to do a wonderful run on YouTube at five, 600 horsepower on the stock internal, but the engine is going to blow fairly shortly after that. So if you're using your car as a daily driver or you don't want to keep reinvesting in new engine component. Make sure it is strong enough for the power figure you've chosen. Don't cheap out. Get stronger pistons, stronger conrods and other ancillary parts just to make sure that that engine is never going to fail on you. So adding a turbo to the VQ35DE is a significant upgrade and that can take the power to about 600 horsepower fairly easily. I say fairly easily, there's a lot of work involved in getting a turbo to work. You definitely need an aftermarket ECU. You need to upgrade the fuel delivery. So at 610 horsepower, you actually need about 21 PSI of boost on these engines. The Garrett GTX 3582 is available in some regions in a kit form, which contains everything you need, the blow off valve, the diverter valve, the wastegate control, and a map. And that should be good for about 400 horsepower. So that's quite a significant bump up in power. And it's quite nice driving the VQ 
Q35DE as a turbocharged engine. The fuel pump will need to supply about 265 litres per hour at these sorts of boost levels and you also need to upgrade the injectors to supply the fuel to the engine. Carbon buildup on the intake can be a problem on direct injection engines so adding an oil catch can is certainly a good idea in your tuning project because it minimises, it doesn't remove completely but it minimises the risk of oil droplet forming and mounting on the valves on the intake. That is effectively going to restrict the intake if the carbon is allowed to build up to such an extent. So get yourself a carbon clean done if the engine is getting up in miles and you suspect that there's been a lot of carbon you can get a little boroscope to go in there and just see what the condition is on the valve but it's certainly a good idea just to make sure you've got a decent baseline on your VQ35 DE. We saw an 800 horsepower version of this engine which is quite impressive and that they'd achieved that by using two smaller turbos in a twin turbo setup. It was the GT2871 turbos with 1000 cc injectors. They had to do quite a few other revisions inside the engine but the block itself and the overall design is nicely able to handle these sorts of power levels so that might give you something to aim for if you want to build the ultimate VQ35 DE. So we've spoken about turbos, intakes, fueling, ECU mapping. So we also need to discuss the exhaust. So getting those hot gases out of the engine as effectively as possible is a challenge. You don't want there to be a restriction. You want the engine to fully empty and a partial vacuum to form so the next intake stroke can get that little bit more oxygen on the intake and help you to make that little bit more power. So bear in mind you need a good scavenging effect. You want those exhaust gases to flow quickly. So a bigger exhaust is not necessarily going to achieve a faster flow. So the bore size is really set by the RPM range. So ideally at low RPMs you want a fairly narrow bore size and at higher RPMs you want a much wider bore size. So it's always a compromise when you specify the exhaust bore size. But the common areas of restriction inside the exhaust on a VQ35 DE is typically around the headers of the exhaust where it comes out of the engine. Would certainly recommend wrapping those or getting some sort of ceramic coating and there's a video coming up on that very very soon. But replacing the catalyst if you're able to do so in your area legally with a higher flowing sports cat can really remove those restrictions. So a sports cat is typically larger, the cell size is larger and it allows a much greater flow rate through it. So you avoid that common bottleneck in the exhaust system and that can actually make the engine rev more freely. If you've got the turbocharger as well it can allow the turbo to spool up more quickly at lower RPM figures and just improves the overall flexibility of the engine. So I need to just point out in a lot of areas a lot of modifications to cars are illegal if they affect the emissions output of the car so removing catalyst is illegal in most regions there are a few regions that still permit that modification or they actually look at the vehicle's emissions rather than just banning any car that should have one that's had it removed and in some areas it's even illegal to remove a working catalyst replace it with a better flowing sports alternative so do check those legalities in your region and your area and just make sure you're not going to fall foul of any of your annual inspections or roadside checks that may be carried out so please let me know in the comments what mods you've done to your vq35 de pass on your tip we're all here to share our experience and our knowledge and the things that we've picked up on our experience with these VQ35 DE engines, which really are phenomenal projects to have. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.